The war unleashed by Russian dictator Vladimir Putin against Ukraine has brought NATO very close to Russia's borders. Already in the future, in 2025, the alliance's Northern Land Command will be formed in Northern Finland. This was announced by Finnish Defense Minister Antti Harkonnen. Reuters reports. The group's headquarters will be located near the Russian border in case of a military conflict in Northern Europe. Let us recall that Finland became a NATO member in 2023, responding to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The alliance's presence on the territory of the country is currently underway. We will propose to NATO to establish a command together with the headquarters of the ground forces in Mikkeli, Hakanen said. He had previously specified that the plans had already received preliminary political consent from the bloc's member countries. Mikkeli is a city and a major logistics center in northern Finland, located just a couple of hours' drive from the Russian border and 250 kilometers from St. Petersburg. At first, the headquarters' annual budget will be about $9.5 million and several dozen military specialists will work there. Finnish Army Commander Pasi Valimaki told a press conference that the new command's exact geographic area of operation would be determined later. However, it would initially be responsible for planning NATO ground operations in the northern region. There is a grandiose betrayal in the Z channels in connection with the fact that NATO headquarters will appear directly on the Russian border. They recalled that Russian dictator Vladimir Putin began his war against Ukraine precisely under the slogan of fighting the expansion of the alliance. However, in the end, he got a radically opposite result. Let me remind you that before SVO, the wise politician talked about NATO expansion and how important it is to push this aggressive alliance away from the borders. As a result of a brilliant multi-move, NATO suddenly found itself 300 kilometers from St. Petersburg. Clever, wrote the Russian Z blogger. Earlier, it is reported that Estonia and Finland are developing a plan to blockade the Russian fleet in the Baltic Sea in case of an extreme situation. Let us recall that the Estonian authorities did not rule out sending Estonian troops to Ukrainian territory to carry out rear tasks. The death toll rose to 10 after a gas station explosion in Russia's Republic of Dagestan on Friday, the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situation said. Another 11 people were injured in the blast on the outskirts of Makhachkala, the ministry added. The wounded people were hospitalized, citing health authorities. Search and rescue operations at the rubble of the explosion site are underway, according to TASS news agency. Firefighters and rescue crews pulled two bodies from rubble on Saturday following an explosion at a gas station in Russia's southern region of Dagestan, bringing the death toll to at least 12. The explosion on Friday triggered a fire that tore through the service station and its cafeteria on the outskirts of the regional capital, Makhachkala, said Russia's emergencies ministry, adding that two children were among the dead. The fire was later extinguished. Makhachkala is about 1,600 kilometers south of Moscow. Regional authorities said a criminal investigation into the cause of the explosion has been opened and that Saturday has been declared a day of mourning in Dagestan. Last August, a massive explosion at a gas station in Dagestan killed 35 people and injured 115 more.
Artillery units in the Ukrainian city of Pokrovsk are aiming to destroy Russia's weapons and supply routes as the strategic city continues to be shelled by enemy forces. The commander of Artillery Battery, 15th Brigade, Danilo told British broadcaster Sky News that the city was becoming increasingly difficult to defend as the enemy increases their production every day. Russia's forces are seeking to advance into the city, given that it is an important supply hub for Ukrainian forces, according to reports. Homes and buildings in the city have been destroyed, and some left derelict. Resident Hanna told Sky that it felt like people don't matter to anyone and that the fighting had turned Pokrovsk into a dead city. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in Washington on Thursday. The talks were part of Zelensky's push to get the U.S. to allow his troops to use long-range weapons to strike deeper into Russia. But the Kremlin sent a strong, new warning to the West this week. President Vladimir Putin said that any nation's conventional attack on Russia that was supported by a nuclear power would be considered a joint attack on his country.